friends and welcome back to the I I show. I'm your host I I, and today is week two of my mandala vlogs. So I actually have been doing some research about mandalas, and I realized that there's a lot of things that I don't know, and so one of the things I wanted to do on this channel is share with you some of the things that I've learned and this is going to be an ongoing series so I don't want to just throw all this information at you immediately I'm going to spread it out over the different videos so that each time I upload a video I get to share something I've learned and I get to show how I have put that learning into practice in that video so there's five things that I picked out that is very big that I'm going to be sharing with you over the next couple of days. So there are five things that have really stood out to me that I wish to talk about. The first thing is mandalas and form. The second thing is mandalas and balance. The third thing is mandalas in religion and tradition. The fourth thing is mandalas and uh, in regards to self and the universe. And the fifth thing is mandalas and the symbology incorporated into them. So, I think one of the biggest takeaways that I have learned from this experience of creating mandalas is that when I first started working with mandalas, I was very heavily influenced by a couple of books which was talking about the a sort of type of ev evolution of the mandala. However, I think this specific type is a very um, is a very minor form of mandala creation and I realized as I kept on researching that the primary form of a mandala is to bring balance within the psyche. Um, Carl Jung actually was the first person who incorporated mandalas into the teaching of and the research of psychology and a lot of the little techniques that he would use as part of therapy was to incorporate drawing circles and having this kind of repetition exercise to create a meditative uh, exercise to help patients. So, um, I felt that at first when I found out about this, that it was very much um, restrictive. However, I wanted to find, let me, let me just show you some guys, even in my works, it's so interesting because take for example the very first piece I created, right? Even in my attempt at just doing something uh, random, the need to create balance and form is still there. And the idea behind this process of bringing balance and form is kind of like from a state of chaos and destruction to a state of calm and order. And that in itself is a healing process to bring everything to alignment. So even as I look back on a lot of the things I've done, see this is a little bit chaotic. As you go further and further, you can start to see there's a sort of uniformity where stuff is sort of pulling together. So even in my unconscious mind, you can start to see there is a structure, there's a pattern forming. And especially in this one where, you know, at the back, there is still a bit of chaos elements. I'm really starting to reflect over and over again, similar patterns. And even if you cut the moon in half, it is a reflection of itself on both sides. So at first, I thought very little of this effect, but even here in this one, you can tell, again, you split it in half, there we go, there's a mandala. On Both sides is reflecting the other side. It's just that there's certain elements around here which are symbols 
which even I didn't realize had a deeper connection to me, which is why I want to talk about some of these elements in greater detail so that this process isn't just about um, creating for the sake of creating, but also understanding the creation and understanding how it is helping and healing and how it is you know, deriving meaning from the unconscious space. So this is all I'm going to say for this video. I really hope that helps to um, guide you and give you some inspiration behind why you're also creating your mandalas. The whole point of the mandala is very much um, subjective to the person creating it. However, there are certain elements of mandala creation that are universal and those are the ones I want to focus on because I feel that mandalas are such beautiful uh, creations. They hold so many different facets to them and I really, really want to share my love for this art form with you guys. So, yeah. That's it. That's all the little information I'm giving today. Tune in tomorrow for uh, when I talk about form um, or balance or one of the other five elements. And then, of course, thereafter, I will keep drawing on whatever information that I get or I understand or I study from. And then, of course, I will impart it on you guys so that you can learn with me. Ding. So, yeah, the mandala I'll be working on today. I am actually going to be really trying to make it a proper mandala where there is symmetry and form in it and at first it was very scary for me to you know sort of go from a place where I've just been doing very you know whatever you know there's no structure there's no form this is just how I feel to something that's more focused However, now that I understand the meaning behind it and, and I understand the reason why you need that balance, it gives me uh, motivation to stick to the forms because I want to go through this healing process and I want to focus on balance, not just focus on how I'm standing and sitting and walking, but how I'm thinking, feeling and dreaming. Yeah, so I hope you guys really enjoyed today's mandala making session. As always, get your art books ready. Oh, and also, um, I have been bleeding through because I've been getting a little bit more intense. So let me just show you an example of a bleed through. Um, yeah, so I think you can kind of see like there's a bit of a dirty dirty spots of blue in the yellow so that's where the colors bled through from the other page so what i'm going to be using today is i'm going to be putting a scrap a piece of scrap paper in between the bottom two pages so that i can protect the other pages so that they come out cleaner so if you want to take that on here you can also see again I've got little spots up there and so on. Uh, yes, yeah, so that would be my advice to prevent more uh, bleed damage and to have like a cleaner finish. So yeah, if you got all your tools, your markers, your color pencils, your crayons, and whatever else you need, do add on. And this is very important if you want to continue with the style that I'm moving towards let me get the extra tools that you will need okay you will need a mathematical set so the thing is I'm a sucker for purple so you don't have to get it like this however I really really love purple and my girlfriend bought me this limited edition purple mathematical set you can see inside everything's purple the whole lot is purple so the idea behind it is that this really helps you to create um, exact symmetry and exact precision. It takes everything onto the next level, which is something that you require. 
It also comes with a set of these. That helps with measurement. This is very important because in the gap here that you see, you can put um, a pencil or a pen. Now, unfortunately, this is too small for a pen. So what I did is I went out and I actually bought a custom, no, not custom, a specific size and type, which is much bigger and steadier and the grip is better. And so my ballpoint pen fits perfectly. And so what you do is you align it. If you, if you want, you can release the tip. You align it such that the tip of the pen, you see that the tip of the pen, let me focus on this. Focus. Now the tip of the pen touches the tip of the pin. And then you see this type, you twist it, you tighten it such that it's firm. You see it doesn't fall out? Then you can use it like this. Okay, got it? You got a piece of paper. Let's pretend it's like this. This will be jabbed down and then you can create a perfect circle. So all of this is just to help you create something that is perfectly symmetrical. It's not necessary for you to have it. However, I think these are all good tools to have simply because when creating something that is very specific, having these tools will make the process easier and faster for you so that you can move on to the more fun part, which is coloring it in. <laughs> Plus, it helps you to execute your vision um, accurately so that you're not frustrated and like, why is it not working? How come I can't make it look like this, you know? You're not like so focused on that because... Uh, how do these things go in? <laughs> trying to put my magical set away, sorry. Yip ya! Yeah, you're not focused so much on getting it perfect because it's the tools are already making it perfect for you. You just need to execute your vision. So, yeah, get yourself one of these. It doesn't have to be this brand. This is just a very old brand and I bought it because it's purple. So, yeah, get this. Um, try to invest in... Uh, an extra thing. I don't know what brand this is. Uh, it's it says on the side it's Study Collector by Mapped. So anything will do. Just just test it out when you're in the bookstore. Test it out. See if a pen can fit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean. See if a pen can fit it. So yeah, I'm gonna be using these tools from now on on top of everything else I've talked about. And so let's get right into it. Hi Meeps, editing I I here. So if you noticed that if you noticed that the video is a little bit sped up, um basically I was editing and I realized that the video is over two hours long because of how long I have made the intro. So in order to cut down the time, I have sped up the drawing process by half. So I hope you still enjoy the video. It is still quite a long video. So I hope it doesn't take too much away from the experience. And as always, I hope you enjoy it.
all daily videos. Tune in, um, I think it's around say 1 a.m. Uh, in, I don't know, California time, something like that. Um, I, I do this later in the day so I feel that it makes sense for me to post later in the day because I need to do the edits of the videos so just in case you're wondering when my videos come out they come out pretty late because of the edits and everything so yeah so every day you can be sure you can rest assured that sometime in the early morning you can see the video if not, you know, later in the day, I think later in the day is better. Later in the day when you can actually sit down and do it. Unless you're awake, like the little insomniac that I used to be when I was 16 or 17. And you need somebody to accompany you, then yeah, okay. <laughs> like, 2 a.m. Just, if you live in America, it's around 2 a.m. in the morning. There, there's my video. <laughs> okay, so as always, may your days be magical. I will see you.